you've ever been offended or have been accused of being offensive, watch this video. So welcome back. A little bit of uh, Leadership Unscripted from Daryl Black here. This episode is prompted by a, a question I had from a friend of mine, and it's one that just like culture, it comes up quite often. And it's something I've personally grappled with or not grappled with, but have had to uh, deal with in the past. And that is, what do you do on both sides? One side being, if, if something you say is viewed as being offensive to somebody, it's politically uh, insensitive, culturally insensitive, politically incorrect, whatever, and insert whatever that might be. So you're the offender, but also the flip side is, You've been offended. Uh, so somebody has said something that you took exception to, whether it be again, cultural ins insensitivity, gender, any of, any of the things. So question came, Hey, Daryl had this situation at work and this is, uh, in this particular case, it's a senior person. And he said, you know, we use a lot of black humor on our job. And more, most specifically around in this particular context, emergency services, but the conversation and context can change and apply to anybody. So he said something and the individual was offended. And so the individual talked to my friend and said, Hey, uh, it's a little bit offended by what you said and here's why. And so my buddy and the why was actually something very, very personal. It wasn't a, a generic kind of, you know, sentiment. It was actually something literally that this individual had a uh, personal connection to. Won't get into the context, but essentially my friend said, you know what? Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Here was context by which I said it. My intent was this and not to be offensive. So I appreciate you letting me know, and I appreciate the feedback. I will be mindful of that in the future. So what happened after that? Nothing, nothing, zero. It got put to bed. So I want to do this video to really highlight what right looks like in terms of those exchanges. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of caveats to this, of course, but let's talk about what right looks like. First of all, what my friend said could be deemed offensive. And frankly, it didn't matter if he felt it was or not, if somebody was offended by it, it as the leader, he needs to address it. So one of the things is your personal opinion as a leader doesn't really matter. And then we'll get into why this exchange was what right looks like. But as a leader, when you take on that burden of leadership, it's not a privilege. It's not an honor. It's, you know, for those of us who are in leadership positions, you know, it can be pain in the ass, right? It can be difficult. Well, it always, it's difficult. And so your personal opinion doesn't really matter. The reality is the workplace is changing and continues to change. Society is changing, has changed all of the things. So you really have a choice to make. And that choice is you either go kicking and screaming and digging your heels in and, and all of that and try to resist the inevitable winds of change. And what that's gonna do is cause a lot of frustration, stress, piss you off a lot, piss off everybody else around you, alienation, and life's too short for that shit. So that's one win. You're gonna kick and scream, guess what? It's going to be happening anyways. So the other option is you can waltz into it. When you waltz into it, you acknowledge, say, Hey, I got some work to do. At least for me, I can't speak for you, but I hell, I can't even waltz now. So that's probably a bad example, but, uh, you, you get the idea. You, you gotta, you gotta realize, Hey, you know what? There's a, a technique, there's, there's concepts, there's mentality. There's an approach to learning how to dance. Uh, maybe, you know, you gotta learn all the tunes, all of the things. So you can, you can choose to embrace that and change your frame around this change that has happened and continues to change. So that's the macro part of this whole thing. The choice is yours, but newsflash times, they are changing times they have changed. So as a leader, you've kind of given up your, your right to your own personal opinion. You do have to toe the party line. You have to toe the organizational line. And I'll speak for myself. I'm of the generation. That when I was young, absolutely the things I said and did could be deemed through the lens of today, could be deemed as insensitive, politically insensitive, culturally insensitive, 100%. There is no, well, believe me, I'm going to push on now. I'm fully, fully admitting it. That said, the only way that 
person like me has been able to evolve is through feedback and an open mind and recognizing that I do have biases. So I appreciate it. And those who I talk to appreciate it when, if there's something that is said, that's insensitive, again, whatever it is, I sincerely appreciate somebody telling me directly say, Hey, Daryl, I was offended by this because of that. I appreciate, I literally appreciate that. Because 99.999999% of the time, my intent, just like my friend's intent, and just like most people who I come across in my day-to-day -day job and, and my consulting and all that, my coaching, nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings. Nobody wants to be offensive. Nobody wants to act maliciously. So how about we start from that frame and say, you know what? People aren't intentionally trying to hurt others. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's be positive at first. Now, if there's a pattern of behavior, that's something different, but at least initially give people the benefit of the doubt, have the conversation with somebody in a private setting, be respectful. You can be emotional or at least have emotion, but don't be emotional about it and allow the, op the person, the leader, the person who said the offensive thing to acknowledge and apologize and the opportunity to change their behavior. If they don't apologize, if they don't change their behavior, if they don't acknowledge it, then we have a problem. Most people I come across, most people that I work with, and maybe that's just my sphere, folks I, I choose to surround myself with, we will be better. The person you talk to will be better. Then they can make the adjustments and they can improve and they can be more mindful. So that allows them to grow, allows you to have said your piece and to have represented your side and your views. Boom. Win-win. Right? Now, what great does not look like is my buddy saying something that can be deemed offensive and that person not saying a freaking word to my buddy or myself, like whoever's in that context. So your leader or whoever it is that said it, you don't say anything, but what you do is you talk to HR, right? So you go to HR because there's a policy, there's procedures, there's all the things. And you know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. What was said was probably incorrect. It was violating or, or at least bending or we're in a gray area or whatever that is. So then what happens is HR investigates and, and it's not HR, like HR is there, they're in an anger, fantastic. But they investigate it. And this is what often happens in the real world. Organizations have no choice but to act on this, and rightfully so. When they choose to act, sometimes they'll reach out to the leader or the person that was offensive and say, hey, I found a complaint. Can't really talk about it because it's private, but we're investigating it. And have you ever used these kinds of terms or have you ever acted in this way or whatever it is? And so now what's happened is this has gotten huge. And now heels are dug in, people are defensive, people are pissed off. When at the end of the day, I would submit most of the time, or at least a lot of the time, people I work with, myself included, even if I'm teaching a program, I've been very sensitive to the words I use with regard to, you name it, examples and, and genders, all of, all of the things. I lose that opportunity or the leader in this instance who said something that was deep defense, they lose the opportunity to improve on the spot and on the spot the correction is always the best and it stays between individuals now i'm not saying that you hide this behavior if it's a pattern as i said or you could still report it absolutely if it's something that's fence well yeah it's reportable i'm not saying not report it but as a first step at the very least have a conversation with the individual and allow them to apologize acknowledge and be better and you'll see your toxicity drop for sure. And a lot of times people can just admit it and move on. Now, if it's a situation where you're physically intimidated or, you know, you're literally unable to speak to a person directly for whatever reason, right? Physically intimidation or pattern of bullying and all those other things. Absolutely don't put yourself at risk or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all, but what right looks like is speak directly to the individual. Allow the person to apologize, acknowledge, and be better. And you'll also see a huge amount of respect grow between the two. 
and recognize that let's give each other the benefit of the doubt initially, provided it's not a pattern. And I'll just speak for myself and my friend. We didn't want to hurt anybody. Can you kid me? Not at all. We're, we're not malicious people. And most of the individuals I talk to are not that way either. And the people that are quote unquote offended, nobody, well, I'll be careful here. Uh, for the most part, don't have a malicious intent either. Now, absolutely. There are people with agendas on both sides, both the offenders and those that are offended. And that's a whole different conversation. But right now I just wanted to highlight what right looks like. So somebody says something offensive, approach the individual directly, privately say, Hey, I was offended by this. And here's why punt it over to the person that said the, the comment or statement, allow them to acknowledge it, apologize for it and be better. And if they're not willing to do those three things, yeah, we got a problem. If they're not going to acknowledge it, they're not going to apologize. And if they're not going to be better, yeah, absolutely escalate the shit out of that. But we don't want a workplace where end arounds are going to happen all the time. And that just creates distrust and trust is critical, critical for team cohesion, critical. So if you want every person for themselves, make sure there's no trust on your team. And if you want to see productivity go down, make sure you remove trust. If you want people to be stressed out and on leave all the time, yeah, remove the trust from a team because trust is just such a critical part. So I will have trust in you to tell you that you will tell me if I say something stupid or something incensed, I trust that. And you will also trust me to acknowledge, apologize and be better. But recognizing that this is a two way street and the only way we can all get better collectively is by all of us dealing with this situation with as calm, cool ahead as possible, using as much logic as we can and giving people the benefit of the doubt first, trust first, and then go from there. So I'm curious what your thoughts are around this, particularly sometimes prickly topic. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.